one thing that seems to show up in the files and shows up in the conversation that people have about Tesserum a lot that I haven't talked about yet are World Elixirs. If you guys don't know what World Elixirs are, they're basically elixirs that you can buy with crowns to skip entire worlds in Wizard 101. As in, let's say that you hate the world of, I don't know, Chrysalis. Just, you know, picking a random example of a totally popular world that nobody would want to skip. You could pay a certain number of crowns and never have to do Chrysalis when you're questing through it. Now, these world elixirs, they have not made it into Test Realm yet physically, but we do know a little bit about them. One, we have some data mine files that show that there are elixirs in production that are showing up in Test Realm files, even though they're not in Crown Shop. And what these are doing is they're just advancing you in your own quest line. We even had confirmation from a dev in my chat about this. And that's the fact that they are coming soon. And they're working on not just, you know, second arc. They're working on every arc when it comes to World Elixir. Now, I think there's a lot of things to talk about here. What should the pricing be? And is this something that's actually good for the game? Now, in terms of talking about pricing, I think we got to look at the most analogous thing that we have, which is the level 50 Elixir, which is essentially something that helps you skip five worlds. Now, for skipping five worlds, you get 30,000 crowns as a price tag. And can I be honest? They are not going to base it on the number of worlds you're skipping. They're going to base it on the amount of time that you save. Meaning, let's say that they made an elixir that advanced you from level 50 to level 100, right? I think that would be more than 30,000 crowns. Meaning, each world elixir would probably be, at the very bare minimum, at least 6,000 crowns. And frankly, I would be very astonished if they didn't make it something like 10,000 crowns or more. Because at the end of the day, you're skipping a lot of playtime. And I assume this is like, you know, your second or third or fourth time. You're skipping a lot of inconvenience that you otherwise would have had to go through, like, basically against your will. I think the way they would have to price it is they would have to say, you know, okay, the average person that pays for membership uh, will pay like $10 a month. And then they would have to look at the average player and look at how long it takes for them to quest through a world like Chrysalis and do the math out on how many crowns of worth that would be. I think that's the only way that they could do it, but because the, the key word here is that it's an average player, keep in mind, the player base, pretty damn casual. So I feel like for the average player, It'll take like a month maybe to get through Chrysalis. So I feel like a $10 price tag for skipping a world, especially something like Chrysalis, for example, as I keep using as an example, I feel like that's something to expect to the point where for most people that know how to quest fast, I'm not sure these would ever be worth it. I'm honestly surprised that even this is something that so many people buy because honestly, the first few worlds you're skipping with this level 50 elixir, you could probably get it done in a week if you speed quest it. I honestly think the elixir that they should have tried out first was after level 50. That's just my two cents. This one honestly makes less sense to me than actually being able to skip worlds in the second, third, and fourth arc. But in terms of the pricing, yes, I'm sure it'll make money. I'm just not sure it'll be worth it for people unless they're very casual and they've already done the quest line and they're really, really trying to to, like get to that end game but i think this opens up the conversation for a more important topic should this be something that king's isle even does to begin with and frankly y'all i'm skeptical about how much this is good for a game in the long term should there be an option to like you know fast forward through your gameplay if you've already played it sure but paying to skip world after world after world i think what it runs the risk of doing is it removes the incentive for the devs to make questing a rewarding experience the reason why so many people are excited to be able to pay to skip Mirage or Imperia or Chrysalis, it's because when you do that, what are you actually getting? You're not getting anything that you can use in the end game, really. Now, let's not get it twisted. Like, I think there's a lot of rewards when you play a world for the first time. I think that when Wizard 101 really does what they do well, in my opinion, which is what makes them different from other game companies, when they write that score, when they make these characters, when they create that script, when they cultivate these worlds, when they do that, they're at their best. And I think the first time player experience is always goaded. I feel like, yes, you can always point out little things you don't like, but I think there are very few people that have played Wiz or continue to play Wiz that'll say that their first time playing through the world doesn't feel rewarding. But this isn't about that, right? It's about the second, the third, the fourth time. What do you get when you play a world for the second, third, or fourth time? Maybe you'll get some seeds that you can use for gardening, maybe a couple of cool stitches if you get lucky, but for the most part, you don't even get spellments requesting once you've reached a certain point. So I feel like they really, really 
really do need to add a lot of things to the loot table because this should be the last resort. It shouldn't be their go-to when it comes to removing inconvenience from the gameplay. And let's talk about inconvenience in the gameplay. There is an extreme issue with some of the later worlds in the second arc that I think really hold some players back from looking into the end of the game. And I think the real shame that these couple of worlds really like create this problem is because I think they really got their act together when it came to the pacing of the plot when it came to later worlds. I think Polaris does a great job, maybe a little on the shorter side actually. Mirage and Imperia did not feel crazy for considering this is a whole arc, it, this is not crazy. And really when we get to Caramel, Lemuria, Novus, it does not take forever to go through a world. It's more about the experience and the ambiance of anything Thing, and obviously the farming that happens after. I think that's when you end up spending more time in the world, right? Not to quest through, but to maybe farm something. That's a very different concept than what makes a tedious uh, experience in Chrysalis and Azteca. I think Azteca and Chrysalis, they really need to look into why these worlds are so tedious to go through and figure out why, like systematically, like look at the quests and, and just shorten it a little bit here and there and then put out the elixir. I feel like the option shouldn't be, oh, we made it so inconvenient that a price tag like this seems justified in your head. It should be, look, we put an effort in to modernize the experience that you have when you go through Azteca, when you go through Chrysalis, but we acknowledge that maybe you're on your fourth or fifth playthrough, so why not buy an elixir if you want to do it. I think that mentality makes a lot more sense to me than just putting out an elixir and whipping it out instead of solving some of the issues in the game right now. I think especially after the first arc, spellman drops from minions should be a very regular thing. Spellman drops, whatever spellman you happen to get from bosses should be guaranteed. I don't really see why that wouldn't be the case. I think a simple change like that and then, you know, like adding in treasure cards, you add in jewels, you add in seeds that people want for gardening, you add stuff like that and people are less likely to actually want to skip the world to begin with. All in all, y'all, this is something that I think is going to be coming very, very soon. I mean, in the past two test realms now, we've seen files that show an increasing number of world elixirs. Once these are added, I feel like the conversation is really going to pick up. But while we're here, let's wait. What do you guys think of the idea of world elixirs to begin with? Do you guys think they're good for the game or bad for the game? Do you guys think that rushing people to the end game can be healthy as long as you do it right? Or do you think the problem is inherently just in the questing experience and those problems should be fixed first if these things are even introduced to begin with. What do you guys think the pricing should be? Should it be in the tens of thousands per world? Should it be based on the price range of the level 50 elixir? Forward to reading all of y'all's comments. Let me know what you guys think about this in the description. If you don't know about it at all, let me know what you think about it, hearing it for the first time. As always, drop a like if you enjoyed, leave a sub if you and if somebody hasn't told you're awesome today, they doing something wrong. I'll see y'all soon. Stay awesome, y'all. And yeah, y'all. Yeah.